Good evening, everyone. The time is 731. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. Council Member Ferguson, could you do the invocation, please? Good evening, everyone. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, which are new every morning. We thank you in particular for the funds that were allocated and found for the police department. We give you glory and honor for that. Father, we ask that you increase our discernment so that we can determine what is true and what is not, as well as what contracts and what affiliations is best for the city of Glen Arden. Father God, we ask that you endow us with your wisdom, your peace, and your understanding and wise counsel. And Father God, I ask that you will bless the citizens, the residents of Glen Arden and the employees and all who are affiliated with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Madam Clerk, should you do the roll call, please? Councilwoman Fareed. Here. Councilwoman Guillaume. Here. Councilman Harrison. Here. Councilman Herring. Here. Councilwoman Joan. Here. Vice President Ferguson. Here. And President Curtis. Here. All are present. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Uh, hearing none, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fareed? Yes. Councilwoman Guillaume? Yes. Councilman Hairston? Yes. Councilman Herring? Yes. Councilwoman Jones? Yes. Vice President Ferguson? Yes. Yes. And President Curtis? Yes. Okay. Seven zero. Thank you. First up on the agenda uh, are the meeting minutes uh, for March 6th, the work session. March 14th, the public hearing. Um, March 15th, special regular session. And March 20th, uh, a regular session. Is there a motion to um, accept uh, these batch of minutes? So move. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. Council any any opposition to accepting <clears throat> the minutes? Hearing none by unanimous uh, consent, the minutes are adopted. Move on to, um, so if, if citizens remember, uh, last time there was a piece of legislation, uh, R33-2023, uh, a resolution to approve road milling and asphalt overlay from the intersection of Bright Seat Road and Glen Arden Parkway to Jeff Road. Uh, because that piece of legislation was uh, actually presented um, at the public hearing, we wanted to give uh, citizens another opportunity to comment on that before we voted so um, citizens if you do have comments specific to resolution r-33-2023 uh, now is the time to make your voice heard uh, if you're online please raise your virtual hand uh, and i will call on you or if you're in the room please raise your hand and i will call on you are there any citizens comments on this piece of legislation Hearing none, we will move on uh, to vote voting on the legislation. First up is R-32-2023, a resolution to establish a farmer's market in the city of Glenarden. Uh, Madam Clerk. Resolution 30-30, Resolution 32-2023. The sponsor is <clears throat> Councilman Fareed. And co-sponsors are Councilwoman Guillaume, Ferguson, and Jones. The public hearing was held on April 11th. It was introduced on April 6th, and we're in regular session on the 17th. A resolution to establish a farmer's market in the city of Glen Arden. Statement of purpose. The purpose of this resolution is to establish a farmer's market for the city of Glen Arden. The resolution calls on the city to identify a site that is ideal for hosting a farmer's market, establish a steering committee, Established farmer market rules, 
and regulations, create and distribute a vendor application and qualifications, and launch the farmer's market within 120 days from the adoption of this resolution, unless extenuating circumstances cause a reasonable delay. The resolution reflects the city's support for the farmer's market as a valuable resource and the city <clears throat> committee to and the city's commitment to collaborate with the community, neighboring cities, nonprofit organizations, and other stakeholders to increase accessibility to healthy foods and address food deserts in our community. A resolution declaring the city of Glen Arden support for the creation of a city-run producer grower farmers market and whereas the city of Glen Arden is committed to increasing the accessibility to healthy foods and whereas the city is dedicated to building a sustainable sustainable regional food shed and to and to educate people about the benefits of sustainable agriculture and whereas the city finds that a farmers market should be perpetuated for the benefit of local of the local community and whereas the city wishes to emphasize the direct connection between local food choices and the quality and health of our environment and daily lives, and whereas the city supports farmers slash growers who cultivate the land using sustainable agricultural practices or raise livestock using humane and sustainable practices, and whereas it is in the best interest of the city to govern, manage, and administer a farmer's market for the residents of Glen Arden and surrounding communities, and whereas the city desires to maintain farmer's market as a public for the public and its residents and visitors alike, and now there before be now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Glen Arden sitting in regular session on the 17th day of April 2023, establish a farmer's market that as follows. Number one, the city will allow the use of public property for the farmer's market, such as undeveloped parcels and marginal park land, and will include a farmer's market as a desired use of public property. The city will designate an accessible area to be used for the farmer's market within 30 days of the enactment of this resolution. Number two, the city shall establish a steering committee consisting of 10 members, the city manager, treasurer, director of public works, chief of police, three council members, and three residents, one from each ward serving a one-year ter one year term. The city shall, the city manager shall manage, shall be the chair and the committee of the committee, and the city's council shall approve the three residents in accordance with the city committee appointment requirements. The committee shall commence its first meeting on or after April 18th, 2023, with at least seven members. Number three, the steering committee shall be allocated an in initial operating budget of 25,000 from the city's reserve. The city shall present a suitability, suitably detailed operating budget for fiscal year 2024 to the city council for approval by May 31st, 2023. Number four, the steering committee shall establish farmer market rules and regulations. Number five, the steering committee will create a vendor application process and define vendor qualifications. Number six, the steering committee will approve vendors who meet the qualifications, have completed an application, and have the vendor fee when applicable. Number seven, at least 25% of the vendors must participate in the farmer's market's nutrition program FMNP, and accept Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, SNAP, Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, WIC, and the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, SFMNP. Number eight, vendor applicants who are participants of the city, city's community gardens shall be given preference and have their vendor fee waived. And number nine, the City Council here, hereby waives fees associated with the issu issuance of special event permits to operate the farmer's market. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion to um, bring this to the floor for a vote? So moved. Second. 
<laughs> Moved by Councilwoman Jones, seconded by Councilman Hairston. Any discussion? All right, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Free. Yes. yes. Councilwoman Guillaume. Yes. Councilman Hairston. Yes. Councilman Herring. <clears throat> yes. Councilwoman Jones. Yes. Vice President Ferguson. Yes. And President Curtis. Yes. The vote is 7 0. Thank you. Next up is R33 um, 2023. Resolution 33 20 23. The sponsors are Council Members. James A. Herring and Robin Jones, and the co-sponsors at the request of the administration. The public hearing was April 11th. It was introduced on April 6th, and re uh, we're now reading it in regular session. A resolution to approve road milling and asphalt overlay from the intersection of Bright Seat Road and Glen Arden Parkway to Jeff Road. Whereas it is necessary to mill and overlay the asphalt pavement on Glen, Glen Arden Parkway beginning at Bright Seat Road to Jeff Road and tie in the existing paving joint line. And whereas the city has received a proposal from NZI Construction Corporation, Appendix A, to undertake the milling and repaving of Glen Arden Parkway according to the recommended minimum specifications. And whereas this work is authorized without a formal bid process pursuant to Section 818C, in lieu of a contract bid process required by this section and in place of section 821 a b and c of the city charter whenever a federal state county or local government or agency thereof whose purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city of glen arden has conducted a bid and awarded the contract the city may purchase by contract the bid item at the bid price from the successful bidder subject to approval of the mayor and council and Whereas Prince George's County has, deduct, has conducted a competitive bidding process and awarded a contract to NZI Construction Company, PG County Contract 932-8, to perform services such as asphalt milling and overlay, ex Exhibit B, and whereas Prince George's County's purchasing policies are comparable to those of the city, and whereas the council declares the provisions of Section 88. 818B of the city charter have been satisfied so as to justify the waiver of the competitive bidding process required by section 818A of the city charter. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city of Glen Arden, Maryland, sitting in regular session April 17th, that a contract for road milling and asphalt overlay be, uh, be signed to NZI construction in a total proposed amount of $484,829.80 with an added contingent for contract asphalt prices that are based on the cost of the liquid asphalt at the time of the county, of the county award, which is $441.75 per ton, which consists of which cost changes on a monthly basis. The county follows the adjustment formula established and approved by S SHA State City Highway Administration, MDOT, which the City of Glen Arden will follow on this contract award. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, is there a motion to bring this to the floor for a vote? So moved. Moved by Councilman Harrison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Jones. Any discussion? I have a question. Yes. Um, <coughs> Um, normally, um, the um, these um, resolutions also show the line item in the budget where the monies is coming from. Mr. Stewart, uh, do you know what line item this is going to be coming from? Can you use your mic, please? It's coming from the capital. I don't remember the number right now. Okay, could you give the council clerk the um, line item number to so that she can insert this on the resolution? Will do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Councilman um, Harry? 
Could we make sure that we get the attachments to this? Yeah. All right. I, I, I didn't do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll make note of that. All right. All right. Any other discussion? Here you go, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fareed. Councilwoman. Yes. Councilwoman Guillaume. Yes. Councilman Hairston. Yes. Councilman Herring. Yes. Councilwoman Jones. Yes. Council Vice Pre President Ferguson. Yes. And Council President Curtis. Yes. Vote carry seven to zero. Okay. All right. Great. Next on the agenda, uh, we have two topics of discussion uh, sponsored by the Charter Review Committee. At this point, I will turn it over to the chair of that committee, uh, Councilwoman Fareed. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President. Um, <coughs> The first item that we want to discuss regarding the charter resolution proposed changes is how the mayor will be elected um, per the proposal for the city manager council form of government. The mayor will be a member of the council. So one of the seven, <clears throat> the options that we're exploring are having the mayor continue to be elected at large by the citizens that line item is or have the mayor be elected as the council president is currently elected where uh, seven council members are elected and then amongst the seven uh, mayor is selected. And so we wanted to bring that to the council for <clears throat> your your will on what should be done at least for us to propose as a charter resolution and i just want to reiterate that what we're proposing um whatever the council will propose will be in the form of a resolution that will go through the normal charter resolution process so the public will have an opportunity to opine on the proposal Okay, so you're saying that everyone will still go through the election process and it will be similar to what it is now where council members are elected, the council members among themselves will choose basically who will lead the council um, as the That mayor. is one option. I'm sorry? That is one option. And the other option is to um, still have everybody run for office so <clears throat> in the other proposal all seven would be council members one person would be okay. voted as mayor right so <clears throat> you may have multiple candidates run for mayor but ultimately there's only going to be one person who's a mayor the other six candidates will be council members whether they're at large or okay. board representatives um but in this first option that is essentially what we have now right where the where the mayor is selected by the people and then the uh council members are selected um if after the election, though, the operation will be that all seven will operate as the council with whoever was elected as mayor serving in the capacity of what our current council president is serving as. So presiding over the meetings um, and the difference is now with this proposed <clears throat> structure change is that the mayor would have uh, an elect, uh, sorry, um, a voting right where the mayor today does not. Okay. Councilman Hairston. Yes. So that'll make it eight, right? So no, no, She's proposed. it would still be seven. Yeah. So it, let, I'm going to just repeat what I understand. You can tell me if I'm correct or, or wrong. So on the one proposal, uh, you will have seven council members run for council and get elected. Uh, among them, sort of like what we do now, We'll go into a closed session and vote who would be the council president slash mayor. 
under the other proposal, you will only have six people running for council and one person, well, you have six slots for council and one slot for mayor. So the number doesn't change. There'll be seven representatives. Is that correct? That's Council? correct. Okay. That's correct. Council President, may I? Yeah, Councilwoman Guillaume. Sure. Um, Councilwoman Farid. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilwoman Farid, I have a quick question. So, mm -hmm. in regard or for the Charter Review Committee in particular. <laughs> so, if the mayor is elected, and they will then preside the way the council president currently presides. Will that be for all four years or will it be contingent upon the, the way we usually do it with the council currently, which is every year we vote in a new president slash vice president? All four years. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion from council members? All right. Um, so I guess we just need a consensus, correct? Yes. The um, council, well, Councilman Hairston, oh, not Hairston, sorry, Harry. Yeah, I thought this was just for discussion purposes right. only. I think that we need to really I, personally, I think it should have came to a work session and we could have had even more discussion on mm -hmm. it and really hashed it out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's good to put the information out there to let them see where we're going, but I think we as a committee we maybe need to meet again just to, you know, and also meet with the council also to really hash this out. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have been more clear. We don't need a consensus right now. Oh, we're okay. raising this as a topic of discussion. Ultimately, we will need a consensus from the council so that we know which way to move forward with in the charter. Okay, so this is for informational purposes only for us to mull over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Council President. Thank you. Councilman uh, Ferguson. Also, um, this um, change, whatever the change is, will be in, come in effect um, in the next administration, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, and your next topic, Councilman Free is on the classification of resolutions. So we've just had an awesome illustration of a resolution that is largely administrative in nature and um, necessary to just carry on the business of the city, um, maintenance, the asphalt. And so the thinking is that there are certain types of resolutions that can go through um, an expedited process to do exactly what we did with this asphalt resolution versus resolutions, for example, like the farmer's market, which are not things that are necessary for the operation of the city, um, but things that would require, uh, you know, discussion and understanding and um, consensus and meeting of the minds in order to decide if that's something that we want to do for the city. So we want, uh, well, the proposal is to, would it be the will of the council to distinguish, and we don't have to define it now, but just as an example, like I said, the asphalt are typically things that would be considered simple in the sense that they really just are administrative matters but we wanna make sure we have a record of it. And so we're going through a resolution process for it um, and where that can be expedited versus other more complex pieces of legislation that would go through your typical introduction at the work session, public hearing, getting um, comments from the public and then going to a regular session. Um, so just wanted to get the will of the council on that. Um, and we can discuss it more at a work session and. and figure out what types of activities would fall into which bucket. But the proposal is uh, this so that we can kind of operate a little bit more efficiently and focus the majority of our time on substantial le legislation. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Farid. Um, so the only question I, or oh, the idea that I have would be to invite our parliamentarian, Dr. Grant, to just opine on whether, you know, is that proper protocol where you can have um, things that classifying different types of resolutions? 
Mm -hmm. So, be, yeah, so before the parliamentarian weighs in, I will say that this um, was actually suggested to us by our lawyer, our city attorney, when we had that uh, workshop. Okay. Um, and, and also, m many municipalities do it, and they do it in an even less formal way. They don't have actual resolutions, they just bring a motion forward. So, as an example, um, what we could have done, or what a, another municipality might have done is just say, I bring a motion forward to do the asphalt for Glen Arden Parkway from Bright, Bright Seat to Jeff Road, and then we would have just run, voted on it and would have been done. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, like the first uh, bullet point, you know, council can mull it over and we'll uh, have a more in-depth discussion about it at our next work session. Are there, unless there are any other questions here. All right. Councilman Farida, is, is that all or do you have anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving right along. All right. Next up are the administrative reports. First up is the, the mayor's report, uh, Mayor Cross. Um, if you could, you have five minutes for your report. Thank you, Council President, and hello, everyone. Um, have a lovely, chilly evening before us today. Um, this is the mayor's report for March 2023. Covers the time frame from February the 27th to March the 27th. Uh, we did meet with uh, Councilman Herring and Harrison with Heather McComas from the Crown Council team on the evolution of the 5G uh, Glen Arden Woods uh, forgive me, wards one and two were identified for some cellular uh, receptivity improvement zones. Uh, several questions came forth as far as why just wards one and two. Uh, we will have to follow up with a different meeting uh, with Crown Castle to codify uh, their plans relative to the 5G expansion. Uh, the 5G expansion, as they communicated, is basically in these zones because they were identified as high, heavily dropped zones. Um, we do have the ordinance to amend the Chapter 16 ethics letter signed and coordinated uh, by the Maryland General Assembly and acted by House Bill 363, uh, which we are incorporating certain changes into our various um, actions. Annual budget relative to the executive branch, again, uh, for FY24, has been submitted to uh, City Council. Uh, it is now ready for uh, the council to staff out to the citizens uh, to beat our deadline. We did uh, send our feedback to SDAT. Uh, it had to be sent back by May 26. As far as the office of the mayor, we've had 18 different field office meetings, groundbreaking for Pimrose Redevelopment Authority for Prince George's County. Uh, it was a fantastic breaking. This is new as of March the 15th, 2023. Phase three, uh, you did receive a briefing on uh, this particular development through one of our city council meetings earlier on uh, in uh, last year. We did have 158 units that will be structured. Uh, structured meaning comprised of two distinct projects. Uh, we have 44 units that will be financed at about 9% tax credit. The redevelopment replaces the original 578 units that were there, but it distressed Glen Arden apartment complex. Uh, this Glen Arden Hills project represents a $110 million investment in Prince George's County. So this is a great story for the city of Glen Arden. Uh, the Hope in Action Task Force has delivered the uh, five collective uh, reasons to the county executive to consider relative to the disenfranchisement of our youth. As you know, I sat on that board as the chairman for the community assessments. Uh, we are looking at recommendations that will help grow our county and immediately change efforts relative to the amount of violence that unfortunately uh, had wreaked havoc within our youth community. I uh, met with Governor Westmore and his intergovernmental liaison. Work is ongoing to secure several pilot programs, um, planning grants, as well as capital construction projects, inclusions for in and around um, Prince George's County, including our city. We're working with a nonprofit Blue Runway for Autism again. 
uh, as you may recall, Blue Runway is actually a awareness program nonprofit that helps law enforcement distinguish between someone who is autistic or someone who is actually um, in distress. So with that, it would hopefully prov provide a safe approach uh, to our law enforcement for persons who have an invisible disability uh, and actually protect and save lives. Uh, the National um, Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Black Farmers are on delivery and support of agricultural diverse fresh foods, uh, democracy and grants and subsidies. The African descent as far as 20, forgive me, 29 to 30 March. Uh, I set in on that Zoom. There's a lot of work being uh, discussed at the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, by way of supporting uh, farmlands and also I think this is in line with the legislation that we just passed with the farmers market. So this will be a good news story collectively. Uh, attended the Maryland Mayor's Association and also was honored uh, as a global ambassador for the Federation of World Peace and Love. Uh, ringing the bell, Kofi Anna has rang this bell only uh, 459 total. I was at the time 454 to ring this solemn bell of peace and love, stimulating inspiration and hope globally. Uh, we were able to do some great work with the NAACP as well as the American Heart Association and pushing forward to, is that, is that my bell? <laughs> uh, is is uh, anyone opposed to giving the mayor some more time to get through a report? I'm not opposed. All right, uh, Mayor Cross, we'll give you another, another five minutes. Oh, Father! If you can give her another five Jesus. minutes. Um, okay. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, we were able to represent uh, at um, testimony, if you will, before the House and the Senate. And a success story came out before signed die. We were able to get education in the classrooms, breakfast at, uh, for all students in the classroom uh, program approved. So this is an annual appropriation. Uh, it would put 4500000 in an addition to what's already there to ensure that we have breakfasts in the classrooms. As you remember, I talked about this because many of our students, and, and particularly in our community as well, uh, with the busing system being as tragic as it is, they haven't been able to get to school in time to eat the meals. So this will help put the breakfast in the classrooms to allow students to start the day off right with a full meal. Uh, the next legislation, that was uh, Senate Bill 0559. The next legislation was House Bill 0628, Primary and Secondary Education Breakfasts and Lunch Programs. This is the universal expansion to that particular bill, uh, which will allow us to provide free primary and secondary education breakfasts and lunches. So this is a great news story. We're grateful for all those in Annapolis and the hard work that went in through the various uh, institutions, nonprofits, as well as uh, the American Heart Association, NAACP, bringing equality to our youth. Uh, was able to participate in a Women's History Month celebration for Youth Empowerment Foundation. Uh, this is another organization that's seeking to build a relationship uh, with uh, the city of Glen Arden as well as this summit helps moms and mothers uh, and uh, daughters gain tools and support and resources to empower our future female leaders of the world. Uh, this was a great opportunity. Nearly 150 attendees were there. And I would love for us to have an opportunity to bring that here to our local community. Uh, there was a runway uh, involved and Mayor Cross and two daughters came out with tenacious tones of tan. We had a great time. The Office of Emergency Management, Prince George's County, uh, actually Mayor Cross ended up getting CERT training on April 1st and the 2nd, as well as CPR training this past Saturday. So we are working hard and I talked to city manager Habata about this today to build a training here for our citizens that uh, we can do search and rescue techniques, disaster medical operation, utility shutoff, as well as train on the basics of CPR and AED. And as we have the automatic uh, defibrillator that will be put into uh, purchasing for this coming budget, 
This will be a great opportunity for us to train residents willing to work in this committee. Please let uh, city manager or myself know so that we can prepare for our emergencies. Uh, we've had several levels letters of support, and I also want to talk to uh, Prince George's County Rental Assistance Team. Major shout out goes, uh, you remember we had a resident that was in need of a little assistance. They were able to actually utilize the rental assistance program and they were actually paid forward. So now they are current and um, everybody's happy with that. So new jobs secured those payments. So I just wanted to make a shout out for not only that resident's tenacity, but the Prince George's uh, rental assistance program. And with that, uh, there's many more opportunities to expand. We've got some different growth application periods that are opening, and we look forward to uh, working with our youth that will be coming in for the summer program. Thank you again. Thank you, Mayor Cross. Are there any uh, questions for the mayor before we move on? All right. Here are none. Uh, city manager. How about I have, if you could, um, five minutes, five. no, no, five. I should have gave the mayor 10. Um, I think everybody else gets five. So that was my apologies, Mayor Cross. <laughs> um, um, City Manager Habata? Uh, yes. Uh, the report you've got in front of you is uh, from, um, previously the acting city manager um, since I've been here a short period of time. And so some of this material you will have seen before. Uh, we have the public works report. Uh, we have uh, the finance report, which is uh, February uh, that has uh, been provided. And uh, reports from uh, media, from um, uh, Monet Ward. Um, and if you have any questions uh, on a code enforcement or public works or the police department, um, Charles Simpson is here and Wayne Jackson is here representing the police department if you have any questions for them or for me. And Dean is here too with the uh, financial All right. report. Thank you. Um, Councilman Harry. Yes. Um, and this is for actually for uh, Mr. Simpson, if he could come up. Yeah, um, I just want to know: is it, was the door repaired up in the gold room? So we have two doors. Uh, I have uh, first priority locks coming out this week. So the side door upstairs, uh, right? It does lock. But what happens sometimes when it's open, if you're not aware of it, you have to forcefully get it back. But it will be repaired uh, this week. Okay. And this is actually for you and for the city manager. Um, um, they need to make sure that the uh, gold room is secured after these events. Because I came up here on Sunday to print out the postcards for the shred day. And the window right next to the door that you come in in the parking lot was actually unlocked and open. And anybody could have came through there. Those windows are, you know, six feet tall. And then there was another window by the gold room front door that also was unlocked. So they need to walk and check those handles and make sure that those windows are secured. Um, the, the room needs to be secured after every event. So I just want to make you uh, aware of that. And, you know, sometimes some people just pull them open and just, you know, but they need to check that to make sure. Yes, sir. Um, oh, also, one of my pet peeves, honestly, is I hate seeing the grass not cut on the city hall over the weekend. I can't stand seeing that high grass. I think by Friday, our grass should be cut. The town should be pristine over the weekend, and the grass should be cut for the weekend, not all high and everything else. Because I think it, I think you just cut it. Did I just cut it? Well, we had cut it uh, last week. Grew back again. Uh, we cut it this morning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right so here. I just, I just think over the weekend that the city should be looking nice over the weekends and that high grass and that's been a pet peeve of mine since I've been on this council is that the grass is high we, t we ask our citizens to make sure their grass is cut but the city hall in and of itself is sitting here with the grass not cut so all right thanks all right thank you any other questions um for as it relates to the city manager's report which includes the treasurer's report and the 
Yes, yeah, one other question. How much money is left with the op in opera funds, Mr. Stewart? Thanks for that question. The funds in the uh, in ARPA have not yet been dispersed, so we right, are still understand. even it. even with those that are already committed. After we take out what was committed, about how much do we have left? Based on the, what was committed, even through the budget for 2024, we are left with eight hundred and fifty-three thousand. Mm. I, I was afraid of that because personally, I think right now all those funds, any funds left should be committed to Ward 3 paving, street paving. That's, that's just me, but I'll bring it up at the work. We'll just discuss it at the work session. So, all right. Thanks. Uh, as you say about the Ward 3, we will be moving forward to do some of those roads in 2024 as well. And we will use some of the um, ARPA funds to do that. All right. Thank you. Could you provide the council with uh, a list, uh, a breakout of the ARPA funding, what's uh, just what's been allocated and the bottom line of the $800,000 that's unallocated? So Def itemize the ARPA funding. Yes, and that is also included in the budget that was but that was sent to the, um, over the weekend. What page? Oh, oh, no, sorry, the budget. Okay. 2024 budget, yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Mr. President, so where is this budget? Because you're talking about it and I haven't seen it. Did they email it to us? Or? It, it went okay. out over right. the weekend. Uh, we'll check it out. So we'll be able to take it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Council President. Councilwoman Guillaume. Is the city manager's report, does that also roll up the chief of police report or is that separate? Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Jackson oh, she's yeah. yeah, she's okay. May, I believe it does. May I? Yes. May I? Um, this is just something for me to share with the citizens of Glen Arden. I know it's not in the police report, and I understand why. So it's not a reprimand at all. Let me just make sure that I state that. But on March the second, I called the um, the police. The part, the, well, I called the police, um, Glen Arden police, and they were very responsive. But I just wanted to have this community be on alert that there was a gentleman, he was probably close to six feet one, slender. You can tell that he is slightly emotionally delayed or probably even majorly emotionally delayed. But this gentleman showed up at my home at around 8.40 in the morning and he, um, progressed to show me his phone with my daughter's phone number in it. He had my daughter's phone. My daughter's a youth. I did not know him. And then he also said, does my, he mentioned my husband's name. He said, does such and such live here? So not only did he have my daughter's number, but he also knew my husband's name. Um, he would not identify who he was, how he got our information or anything. Um, needless to say, I was very alarmed. And as he walked away I did something that I know that I should not not I, I know that I should not have done and I was lectured appropriately by the police department and um, I was following the gentleman I made sure that there was distance but I followed the gentleman to make sure that I didn't lose sight of him know that that's not the wisest thing to do but police came and they did see the guy and this is a gentleman that has been going around the neighborhood or the community for a while and they've called the authorities on him several times but even more importantly is on the neighbor's ring in for upper marlboro not for glen Arden. this same individual was also seen going trying to open people's doors um so again this could have turned very ugly if um, it was my husband who opened the door and, you know, there are people that are gun carrying or not, you know, you, you don't know what could happen, right? So just wanted to say that we all need to be vigilant and be careful. Um, and I wanted to thank the police department for responding to that. But again, um, just keep your eyes and ears open and I can describe oh, it's African American, well, I'll just say a black male, slender, six foot one. Um, around 21, 22 ish. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from the council before we move on? 
Is there anything in particular, uh, Treasurer um, Stewart, that you want to highlight or bring to the council's attention? If not, then we'll just move on and um, give a chance for our citizens to ask questions. Uh, Mr. At, President, at this point, um, no, we could move on. All right, it would have been the general report. Right. Mr. I do have a question. So we and I noticed the audit in our boxes. So uh, when are we, when will we meet with the auditors? If that, we I think we have set a date for um, May first, the work session. Yes. 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 Okay. Right. And let me just um, one other thing. Let me just uh, give a big shout out to uh, Councilwoman Ferguson and the Chief of Police, Chief Bryant, and all the staff that worked so hard to get us that bond bill in in Maryland for four hundred thousand dollars for our police department. So great work. Appreciate all everything y'all did to get that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Council President, may I? Yes. I'd like to just echo what, council, what Councilman Herring just stated. Excellent job, um, Council Vice President Ferguson and Chief of Police um, Regis Bryant. Thank you. All right. Uh, hearing no other comments, then we'll move on to the next piece, our uh, next item on our agenda, which is citizens' comments. Uh, this is the regular session, so citizens, you can comment on anything, uh, not just uh, specific to legislation, but uh, anything that you would like. Uh, you will have five minutes at the podium. We ask that you state your name and at the very least uh, what ward you're from. If you are in the room, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. I will call you up to the podium, but if you're online, please raise your virtual hand. Um, and I will try to get to you uh, in the order which I see uh, the hands raised. If you do not know how to raise your virtual hand, um, you can open your mic, uh, let us know that you want to speak, and then I'll make sure that you are in the queue. So given that, uh, since the comments are now open, Mr. Powell, I saw first, uh, and then Ms. Wilson, you'll be next. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Anthony Powell, and I live in Ward 1. Uh, when is the next city election, citywide election? In 2025. How come we don't put the... How come we cannot put the status of the mayor on the ballot to have everybody vote for? You know, that's that's the easiest thing to do. Whether we should have a whether vote for the mayor outright or whether the mayor should be part of the city council, won't you let the citizens decide? Because we're the ones who are footing the bill. As far as I know, we have about what, six thousand residents in Glen Arden. As far as I know, there's no demand among the citizens to change our form of government. The only people who want to change the government are people in, the, in this room. So I, plus we had a meeting upstairs in the gold room a couple of months ago, and nobody testified in favor of changing the government. So why, I don't understand why you want to change the government when there is no demand upon the citizens to do so. The mayor, the mayor is not an employee of the city council. The mayor is an employee of the citizens of Glen Arden. But we the ones who put the bill for everybody. So the easiest thing to do is just put this on the ballot and have us vote for it. Or, or call a special election and have us vote for it. It's like a small group of people want to decide what kind of government we should have when there's no demand to change the government. You haven't produced any letters, any text messages, any emails from any citizen demanding that we change the government. So I don't know why it is demand to change, to change the government. So I, I don't understand. That's it. That's all I got. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Powell. I, I will uh, combat one thing. So uh, there is uh, citizen support for this. So it's just not seven people going into a room to come up with this. That's not how it went down. Um, so, and in that meeting a few months ago, there was actually support for it in the building. Uh, so I just want to, you know, to let you know that there is support for this. Uh, also, uh, this is uh, a proposal that came out of the Charter Review Committee uh, that will go to the full council. Actually, it's now going to the full council for us to think about. And it's still going to come before the citizens so that the citizens' voices can be heard. So this is not anything that's happening behind closed doors without any citizen support. It has citizen support. And uh, 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 Mr. Powell. Please, you had your you had your time. You chose to forfeit the rest of your time. Um, and there's also opposition, like any piece of legislation would have. Some for it, some against it. So we'll hear everybody, and then the council, which we were elected to do, will take it into under advisement and try to make uh, the wise decision that we think that's in the best interest of uh, the the city. We may take your advice. It, it may be a, a roaring call that says, hey, let's put on a ballot. It may happen, but it, it, again, it's in the review committee. It's come to the council and it's going to go to the citizens, just like anything else. So thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, OK, Mr. President, uh, I'll go to Mr. Harrington. Oh, okay. for re oh Mr. Let, me, Harrington. let me just say the only person that can put that on the ballot is the citizens, the way that the state uh, has the law written, the council can bring it as a charter resolution, and the citizens have 40 days to petition it to ballot. So that's who has to put it on the ballot. We can't put it on the ballot. The citizens have to put it on the ballot. So, I mean, so that's where it stands. So, if, you know, we pass the charter um, and we pass these resolutions, you have 40 days to get a petition together of 20% of the registered voters in the community to bring it to uh, the ballot. That's the way it works. Thank you, Councilman mm -hmm. Harry. Councilman Farid. Uh, Councilman Harry said it. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just want to reiterate that that was also communicated at the meeting uh, a few months ago. Okay, sorry, Council President. I do I do have one other point. Yes. Because speaking of that that public hearing, there was a lot of misinformation. Um, I just want to reiterate reiterate the salient points of what the proposal is, there will still be a mayor. The responsibilities as outlined currently in the charter for what the mayor will be doing is limited versus what is being proposed. The mayor's um, power, so to speak, would be expanded in the sense that the mayor would be presiding over all of the city meetings and would also have um, the ability to vote on items, which the mayor's office does not currently have. So what is being proposed is actually an expansion of the role of the mayor. Um, and with the proposals that we're um, considering on how to elect the mayor, if we go with the proposal where the mayor is elected um, at large, apart from uh, a council member, then it will effectively be the same that you know, someone can run for the office of mayor. And we put this forward so that our operation can be more streamlined and that there will be no conflicts between the role of the city manager and the role of the mayor as it has been in previous years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the, the setup I have now is uh, Ms. Wilson is, is next, then we'll go to Ms. Lita, and then we'll go to um, Ms. Butler, and then Ms. I can't see that far. Is that C now? Sunil? Oh, Ms. Crutchfield. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I have a comment. I don't have a question. I'm not expecting If you could state your name, please. My name is Celestine Wilson. Thank you. You know. For those online people. They don't have to know who I am. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Thank so the protocol is just when you come up to speak, if you could say your name so people can know who you are. Thank you. Mr. Curtis, if I want to say my name, I will. If I don't, I will not. And as a citizen, I still have the opportunity to speak. You had a citizen who came up at one of your meetings 
who did not say their name, didn't even come up to the podium, and you allowed that. They didn't say their name. You, we couldn't even hear what they were saying, and you let it remain that way. So please don't put restrictions on me just because you feel like it. Now, like I said, I have a comment. I don't expect a comment back from anyone. I heard uh, Councilwoman Fareed say that she is proposing and that the attorney has proposed that we, um, you all do administrative business or whatever without resolutions basically, without having to go through the process. And I'm here to say that citizens had said they want every piece of legislation to be brought to the citizens so that they will know what is going on. If you don't do that, what you will end up with will be the same thing that happened with the police car. It will get swept under the carpet, it will go unnoticed, and people won't know what's going on. That's what will happen. It'll get lost in the sauce. That has happened without a resolution, without it going through the process. So please stop, don't, don't try and make a mess altogether. Don't do that. You, have, you had a process that's working, that was working, but this council for some reason feels that you, we have to, oh, let's shortcut everything. Let's just do this. Let's just do that. There's a reason why processes are in place. And you are always, you come with that all the time about let's just, let's not go through the process. Let's shortcut. And in the process of shortcutting, the money is being spent that everybody doesn't know about. So please follow the processes. There's a reason for them. And yes, the attorney might have said that, but the attorney's taxpaying dollars are not here in Glen Arden. Mine are. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. And I, I will say, for the record, at the beginning, I've asked everyone, when you come up, please state your name. It's not for to single out anyone. So, And I will hope that everybody will respect that rule and just please simply state your name. It doesn't have to be an issue. We don't need to know your address. If you could please, for the record, state your name, that'll be fine. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lita? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mr. President. I'm sorry. Council President, this is... One, one second. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't see your hand, Councilwoman Farid. I apologize. I'm going to go to Councilwoman Farid first. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify because what was just stated about what I said is incorrect. What I said was that the proposal is to still bring forward a resolution. And the example that I gave was what we just did, what we just approved. Resolution 33-2023. That resolution was brought forward at the public hearing. Citizens had an opportunity to comment on it that same evening. They also had an opportunity to comment, comment on it this evening before we voted on it. So the expedited process is that a resolution that was needed to pave our streets was done in one week, as opposed to going to a work session, then going to a public hearing, than going to a regular meeting. And that was expedited because it was necessary work for the benefit of our citizens. What I said was that other municipalities are less formal than that. They actually just bring a motion to a meeting and then they vote on it. So what I'm proposing is not an attempt to eliminate the citizens opportunity to comment nor is it an attempt to not have our proposals be formally documented in the form of a written resolution. So I just wanted to clarify what was said and make it clear about what my proposal is or one of the proposals coming out of the Charter Resolution Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bell, we have one person before you, and that's Ms. Lita. All right, Ms. Lita. If you could state your name, please, for the record, and then you have five minutes. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening. My name is 
Lita Hunter. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to ask what Glenn Arden's plan is um, regarding the vote that came up, um, I think it was March the 10th, I think it was, to banish 24-hour smoke shops to industrial areas and to set a strict 8 p.m. closing time. I understand that those are for new tobacco shops, but in Ward 1, again, I know I've said this before, we have three, and um, clearly one is, at least one is 24 hours. And I've seen at least another one that is open past 8 p.m. Um, there's another one over by the, I guess that's A1, that is selling expired uh, items to, <laughs> you know, to customers. So, you know, we don't want low quality products in our neighborhood, nor do we want three tobacco stores in one ward or in Glen Arden, period. So are there any plans to start enforcing these restrictions? And also they're all pretty much in a residential area, I guess, except for one on a, out on a Martin Luther King. What is Glen Arden planning to do about enforcing these new laws? Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Hunter. Um, as I recall, uh, we did have someone from, um, actually I'll let uh, Councilwoman Fareed speak on this because the, the person from the county who came to speak uh, was, uh, I guess, a couple of um, sessions ago, but Ms. Fareed? Yes, no, um, in terms of the city of Glen Arden enforcing anything, we cannot enforce it until that is fully enacted. And I believe it's 60 days from the passage for which it can be enacted. So we should expect to see those changes happening um, in the May time frame, but you are correct, Ms. Hunter, that in terms of like the where the stores are, their location, that is um, for new stores. And that is because these businesses have legitimate licenses and you can't just take a, you know, unfortunately, although these are not the types of businesses we want, you can't just take a business's operating license away without, um, you know, without any demonstration that they're violating whatever the laws are that they're supposed to be operating under. Um, so once those uh, regulations are in place and they're no longer allowed to operate 24 hours and they're no longer allowed to have neon signs, then that is where, you know, you can take actions and ban to say that they're in violation of those. I hope that helps. Thank you, Councilwoman Fareed. All right, Ms. Butler. Good evening, Lord Butler. Thank you. To the council and to the mayor and staff. Mayor, this is for you. You and I had this conversation about thirds. I see it in your report here. I want to know why you had not talked to council about this, this uh, search program. Answer me that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Butler, for that. So first I wanted to do is get the training. So the county had already set up a training. Uh, so we wanted to go ahead and get the training to see the quality of the training. It has changed from when Councilman Hare, uh, um, Calvin Hawkins used to do it for the city of Glen Arden. It's not quite as involved. So we wanted to get a clear understanding of what exactly was gonna be trained and what were the limitational trainings from what you recall having been trained from under Calvin Hawkins. Yeah, because I was trained under Calvin Hawkins. Yes, ma'am. I've been a member of CERT all this time. I'm yes, still a member. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So now that we have an updated training. One second, one second, because the, the time is running as uh, Mayor Cross answers. So if oh. you want to get through all of your questions and then have us answer them, uh, then your time won't expire. 
You said what? If you could ask all of your questions to take your full five minutes and mm -hmm. then we will respond as opposed to answering one question and having one of us take up all of your time. Oh, okay, yeah. I just wanted her to explain to me because I thought, <laughs> because like I told you, it's very important that all, that the council and the citizens of Glen Arden, especially us seniors, come in together to know what happens. Sure, we have color red, but these seniors have no idea of what to do in case. So that's, that's why I'm saying, and also the, the council members should be trained. And I'm wondering why you never t indicated to them they needed to be trained. You, you can answer afterwards. Yeah. So, that's, so I, that was one of the things that I wanted to ask the, uh, the mayor. So when did you plan on having a meeting with the citizens to talk about the search or the training? Would you like her to respond right now? Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Okay. If you could take it brief, please, so she can get to her. <laughs> Very well. Okay, so the council was made aware of each of these trainings. We also put it under Monet Ward, who is our webmaster. These trainings have been put out and made aware as far as news and current news for people to sign up for them. Uh, they were sent out as well uh, to community members through the various websites. Now, relative to the training, as we discussed just a minute ago, it's not the same training. So we need to have a meeting, you and I, to understand what you trained on and what's now being trained and what additional we need to train. So before we call the citizens, we need to have a plan in place. And now I was waiting on us to have a meeting. Uh, so when you wanna, whenever you're free, I'm available, let us sit down and have a discussion. And I also believe that Miss no. McGee is trained in CERT. We're the only two here in Glen Arden. So you and Miss Madam Mary McGee. Mary McGee, right. So the three of us should sit down and see what was trained under Calvin Hawkins and what the new training has. And I have the manual, I'll bring it with me. And then we can decide what's best to be trained for the city of Glen Arden and move out. So that's what we want to do because the uh, training uh, is one, one second. One second. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, she's <laughs> answering my questions. Yeah. No, I, I just, all right. Well, that's fine. I just want you to know that you only yeah, have Yeah, I know. A my time is almost okay. up. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I'm happy to work with you and Miss McGee on this, and uh, we can bring this forward Yeah, we to were the trained city. on the FEMA. So we had the full four weeks training. So, but I just want you to yes, be aware. But uh, I... Just never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Prince George's has changed that train into two days. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same as the four weeks that you had. But I am happy to sit down with you and Miss McGee and we set a, a date for the citizens as well. Oh, okay. All right. My Thank time almost much. up. Go ahead. You can have a last one. Yeah, I got 16 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's mainly I wanted to talk to the mayor about. Okay. okay. I do want to announce the uh, legacy for Tommy Boardwater. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. You, close, you close out with that. Go ahead. Hmm? You close out with that. Go ahead. You can announce okay. it. All right. Uh, on Friday, May 26, uh, 2023, from 6 to 9, we will we'll be doing a legacy celebration for the state senator, Tommy Boardwater. So uh, for information, they can contact me, Ms. Butler. My phone number is 301-772-1869. Okay. I'm done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and what cert are you referencing? The cert that you, your question was about? Because I'm, I'm confused. I, I don't recall being made aware of a cert. Me either. There's only one cert community emergency response team. It's only one third. Okay. Huh? Is that for like CPR, um, AED, that's something different? So CPR is different. So there's two trainings that Prince George's does. One for CPR and automated uh, defibrillators. Uh, and then there's another training, which is community emergency response team training. So with that training, we now have that- 
Go now, ahead. now that we have three trained personnel, we can actually execute that training. So that's the other thing. We can train all of Glen Arden at this point, but we needed to codify what was different from when Calvin Hawkins ran it um, to now. And it was four weeks when they ran it and the packaging is all different. So now it's just uh, search and rescue. It is team um, allocations for emergency as well as for um, ambulatory and care. And then the other thing that was in there is um, uh, how to clear a room. So it's, it's, it's just not the same. It put out fires, but it's just not the well, same. Well, we learned all that. Yeah. Okay, can, can you, you mind sending that to like all of us? Because I know I don't have I it. I don't have it either. So it's, it's in a hard copy. So that's what we'll do. We need to set up a meeting to see what the differences was when they were trained and what we got trained in two days. And then we'll bring it forward and we can figure out what we want to do as far as emergency response. So uh, this is relative to Glen Arden actually standing up a continuation of operations plan. As you recall, I've been talking about that now for about a while. This is the starting of us doing a continuation operational plan so that Glen Arden has a survivability. Uh, you remember uh, we had our ham radio that we were gonna get trained on by the American Legion. Uh, we ended up losing our representative uh, and as such, haven't gotten another representative to get on board to help us with the ham radio. But that's not gonna stop us. We get the CERT training, we get into the emergency readiness, and then we get everybody CPR trained and we have a, a plan now to go forward with uh, Charles Flowers High School and then also the Gold Room. Those are two places that have been identified as uh, zones for recovery. Still can get so who is who's certified to give this training? As of right now, I'm certified as well as Ms. Butler and Ms. McGee, and we will bring in one of Prince George's County's um, reps as well. Who are you certified through? Prince George's County. This was under um, Homeland Security. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the same program. Point of order, uh, I mean, not point of order, but Mr. President, man. Harry. Okay, I just, I just want to say, I mean, isn't the whole goal is to get as many people trained as possible? It seems like you're holding on to this. And my thing is, we should have all been brought out in the very beginning. And if we all wanted to be trained, we all could have trained. And then we would have had eight people trained and we could expand it that way. Because especially with us, our city having such a large senior population, you know, I mean, emergency disaster recovery is a major thing now. You know, you never know what's going to happen with these crazies out here. You never know when you're going to need it. You know, we should be looking at right now prepping the gold room for emergency recovery. You know, all of that stuff. I mean, we, we, we're talking the thing we, I see we're talking about it. And if something happens tomorrow, you're the only one, you know, and Miss Butler, you know, and she's going to be preparing for Tommy Broadwater thing. So she ain't going to be bothered with us. No. <laughs> so, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, um, I think that something like that should be brought to the full council. So that the full council can take advantage of, um, you know, that training and also be available for our citizens. Because when it comes to it, they're going to be looking at their, their elected officials to take the lead on any kind of disaster recovery. And I think it's really needed. So I just want to say, too, I thought it's so very important that all council members train because you never know, and especially your at large members. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Thank okay. you. Oh, that's not mine. Okay. I just to, yeah, I just want to give a second. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, Ms. Crutchfield, if you could state your name and you have five minutes. I'm Sanella Crutchfield. And I'm Erica. If I could speak to Councilwoman um, Erica Fareed. I, I'm, I, this, if you can abreast the, I, I'm hearing an echo. Can, are you all hearing an echo? No. Okay. So, um, the proposal or resolution for the mayor, there was something there that I apparently missed. Can you abreast me or tell me the resolution number for that? I was doing my research here and I don't see it <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I don't know when this legislation has taken place and what have you, because say for example, if I wanted to run for mayor and you making changes in the um, legislation and I'm not aware of it, 
I, I would want to know it. So if you can just address me on that legislation, I greatly appreciate it. Sure, let me give you an um, understanding of what the Charter Resolution Committee is doing in the process for that. The process is that we are reviewing the entire charter from start to finish, and we are gathering our proposed changes, and then we will submit those changes in a charter resolution and take that through the resolution process that it is dictated by the state, which requires us to have public hearing and um, allows the citizens to petition to referendum, which is basically an opportunity for the citizens to say, no, we disagree and overturn that resolution. So what we're doing now is coming up with our proposals. And one of the areas um, that we needed uh, to agree with the full council, uh, get a consensus of the full council as to what to put in the resolution is how the mayor would be elected and what has already been agreed by consensus for the council that we would move to a city manager um, council form of government. Okay, so there is no resolution at this point. We are gathering the information to put forward a charter resolution. Okay, so you're working on the proposal aspect. And yes. then, when, okay, so when the charter, when you all meet for the charter, I think it's next week, this information will come up in the charter. Yes, we, we discuss this information regularly. You can go back to the recordings if you like. There's also a redlined copy of the charter on the website so that you can see what we've mocked up thus far. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Crutchfield. Are there any other citizens' comments, either here in person or online? Okay. Hearing none, um, again, pursuant to the Annotated Code of Maryland, State Government Article Section 10-508A, the council by majority vote may retire to executive or closed session at any time during the meeting. Should the council retire to executive or closed session, the chair will announce the reason and report and a report will be issued at a future meeting disclosing the reasons for the closed session. Uh, and so at this time, I am I'm making a motion to go into closed session to discuss uh, a personnel, uh, a couple personnel uh, matters. Is there a second? So second. Do, you know, you make a motion. I okay. make a motion. All right. A second. Any discussion? All right, Madam Clerk, vote to go into closed session, please. Councilwoman Fareed. Councilwoman Fareed. Yes. Councilwoman Guillaume. Yes. Councilman Hairston stepped out. Mm -hmm. Councilman Herring? Yes. Councilwoman Jones? Yes. Vice President Ferguson? Yes. President Ferguson? Yes. Voted for the sixth Thank you, citizens, for coming out. Um, this The open portion of this meeting is now closed. Uh, and we wish you uh, have a great week. Thank you.